Alright guys, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. It's just me tonight. This is ClassRacingToday.com ClassRacingToday on Instagram ClassRacingToday on Facebook ClassRacingToday on YouTube And tonight's little mini episode is brought to you by Coffee by Artisan Stuff is good I gotta hide it from the fiance If she comes in here, she keeps taking it from me This one be right here if she comes by coffeebyartisan.com go on there join the race team get a free hat get a free shirt get 15% off of your coffee purchase all right so what's going on this week the reason we haven't done an episode uh this week is because our producer Craig who you all know and my co-host Brian who you all know they are um really upgrading the studio and getting new uh, equipment that will allow us to go live to multiple um, sources or something and that's that's their department not mine and um, we won't have to use zoom anymore which has kind of been like iffy at times and we have lost connection in the past so it's gonna be really cool looking once they get that all set up so for right now you're just gonna see my ugly face for a couple more minutes um, all right, so let's see. First off, thank you to everybody that's been watching the uh, interviews that I did. I'm posting them on the Facebook page and on the YouTube page. And um, I've been getting a lot of positive feedback. So, I mean, I can't thank you enough because after I did every single interview, I picked it apart and thought that it could have been better and was mad that I forgot to ask this or I forgot to do that or, you know, what have you. I'm my worst critic. I always pick apart everything I do. So, um I'm really, it really made me feel good that everybody seems to enjoy them on classracer.com uh, and um, everywhere that I've been putting them up. As a matter of fact, uh, Motor Mania wants me to do that for them again, so uh, you will be seeing more of that in the future, and uh, I'm excited to do it. I, I, and I think I'll get better at it now because I, I kind of was getting a feel for it by the time the weekend at the Class Racers Revival was finished. Also, I invite you to check out the video I posted um, on Bob Bender and Bud Marshall. I believe I know that one's on YouTube. It was on our Facebook page, and I put it to ClassRacer.com because I thought it was such an amazing story for two uh, Vietnam veterans, heroes, as I would call them, uh, to be reunited after 51 years of not seeing each other. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, watch that video. It's it's like two minutes long. Um, I just I had to do it. I just cut it up real quick and and put a little music on it. And it was just uh, I I know Bob Bender personally. I raced with him. Uh, he's a Division One stock eliminator racer out of uh, Maryland, and he's got a '69 um, Chevy Kingswood um, big wagon in O stock automatic, sometimes P stock automatic, and um, that was just a really heartwarming story. Uh, that he, he and his buddy got, uh, they were uh, stationed here together in um, at Fort Knox, I believe. And then uh, Bud got uh, shipped out to Vietnam first, and then Bob got shipped out second. They randomly ran into each other, as Bud says, three months after he was there. He randomly just ran into Bob in the middle of nowhere. They got to hang out that night, but the next morning Bob had to, uh, I guess, uh go back to his base or wherever he had to go they never saw each other again the rest of the time they were in vietnam and then didn't see each other again for 51 years after that it took Bo uh, bud 30 years to find bob after the war and then i guess maybe they've been talking on the phone here and there for a while but that was the first time they saw each other so i invite you to watch uh that video that was up um a couple racing results for you we had a division four uh, Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series. Um, so we had a Division Four race in Houston, Baytown, Texas, uh, last week. And number one qualifier in stock was Jimmy Hidalgo in his E-Stock Automatic uh, 2004 GTO. He was 103.7 under the index, so he can fly when when he needs to. Snag that number one spot. And uh, in Super Stock, Greg Stanfield in the GTJ Automatic 87 Camaro was number one qualifier at 106 under the index. And neither field, stock or super stock, was a mineshaft. So 
if these two gentlemen ran a second under again at some point in eliminations, they're triggering reviews for themselves. Uh, I don't know. I didn't go through their uh, exact runs for eliminations to give you that uh, accurate update if they did trigger it or not. But neither neither field was a mind shift um, at qualifying, at the final qualifying. Now, the stock winner was Jerry Emmons in the A-Stock Automatic 69 Camaro. He had a heads-up final against Britt Cummings. I waited, watched all the downtime. I just couldn't wait to see this final on NHRA TV. It's finally here. I even had my stepson watching it with me, and he complains about making him, make, you know, me making him watch racing all the time. And uh, they leave the starting line, and, and I think... Britt Cummings must have spun, and that was it. That was the end of that race. So that was very anti-climactic, uh, to say the least. I was looking forward to seeing something really cool there. Um, but congratulations to Jerry Emmons on his victory. I know they seem to always win anytime they're racing at a Texas track or whatever track they race at. They win a lot. Greg Stanfield, though, parlaying the number one qualifying position into a win. He was driving lights out. Uh, teens and 20s on the tree all day and just was running great. So congrats, Greg Stanfield, for the uh, for the uh, double up there, number one qualifier, and winning the event. If only they had class and you could have won class two, you would have had the trifecta. Um, all right, so now what I did want to talk about was this... Uh, what led into the Slate Cummings crash, we'll say. All right. Now, anybody can just say, all right, Slate Cummings, you hit the brakes too hard, and you slid into the wall, and, you know, you could say bad things about the way he drove that race. Um, but what what most people won't talk about, or what, what um, is very, uh, I guess, proprietary to stock and super stock, or to anybody that races... Divisional races versus a one-day bracket race. Okay, you come here, you qualify on a Friday, you qualify again on a Saturday, you run first round Saturday night. All right. It could be 85 degrees on Friday. It could be 92 degrees on Saturday. It could be 50 degrees on Sunday for round two or three, wherever they're picking up the race. That's just the way divisional and national events are. You got to be on your game at all times. But... This is the part where you got to pick a dial in for for round three. There are no time runs at a at a one day bracket race. You get that time run in the morning, and then you run eliminations all day. You got the car pretty much dialed in. You can do your you know you can be a driver. You can hold. You can spot drive. You can do whatever you want. But when you are running second or third round on a Sunday morning, where the weather was so much better than it was the day before. This is where the uh, this is where people are forced to you know you got to use the brake pedal, and it can result in dangerous situations. And I saw a lot of cars going through the finish line, a lot of cars going through the finish line on Sunday, skidding, fishtailing. All right, everybody's using the brake pedal and they're using it you know aggressively. So. That's just that's just the way it is. That's the nature of this game when when you get weather swings like that and you're trying to figure out what to dial, especially probably more so in stock eliminator, because you guys are the first ones out. Whereas super stock can watch stock and watch super comp and say, Alright, okay, 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 I, I get it. It's a fast day today. I'm gonna, you know, dial it up or down or whatever and kinda prepare for that. But not the stalker guys, you know, you have it hard depending on how far back you are in the line. Um, so that's just, you know, I know Slate Cummings won that round. I believe he was racing David Latino. It was second round of Super Stock, uh, but he was disqualified. And David Latino reinstated it for round three. Uh, I hope Slate's okay. I, they said he got out of the car and... Um, you know, got out of the car down there after the crash. So I think he's fine. I know the car looked pretty banged up. Uh, so 
best of luck slate hope you can get that fixed and uh hope to see you out at another race pretty soon and what else did i want to talk about oh stock round two the first three pairs had two heads up runs which i thought was pretty cool i mean it was a fast round as it is and now you got two heads up runs right off the bat i think uh f stock automatic was the uh, first pair down the track and heads up, which was pretty freaking cool because I had just turned on NHRA TV and I'm seeing heads up runs right off the bat. Connor Matthews over Bill Bagley. Connor Matthews had an 013 light and whole shot at Bill Bagley. Bill Bagley was 057 and went 1080 with a 5. Uh, Connor Matthews was 013 and went 1081 with a 4 and he was on the brakes. So. Uh, I guess you can call it a whole shot based on the finish line elapsed time, but it may uh, may not have been if Connor Matthews didn't hit the brakes. Then was the uh, C-Stock automatic heads up of David Latino and Austin Ford. Now, this is where I need people to educate me on this 1,000-foot racing stuff because I don't get it. What What is that? All right. We leave together. I'm assuming it's talked about before you go down the track. Hey, let's race to a thousand foot. Whoever gets there first, we lift, and that guy gets the win. All right, that's a pretty decent honor system you got going on there. Like, what if? First of all, what if it's close and you can't even tell who's who's winning? You know, you're on a you got a fender out there, but you know you, you're not really sure. Do you both lift? Do you just run it out? And say a prayer do you like what if what if the one guy is supposed to lift and he just doesn't want to do it anymore like he, he says screw it i'm not doing it anymore and just goes through you know while the while the guy who just thought he won his thousand foot race lifts the guy who lost the thousand foot race decides ah eh, screw it throttles it through and takes the win like how's it resolved fist fight in the shutdown area or or what? Just bashing online. Like, I don't know. Get this thousand foot racing stuff. I don't get it. I, I, I refuse. I'll never do it. I don't care how bad you're going to beat me. You're going to try. You're, hopefully, I'm forcing you to go 120 under to do it. And you're going to get hit with horsepower. Because if you just thousand foot race the same guy every single time, you're never going to beat him. So, what's the point? At least, at least try the long term investment. Try to push him out. Try to tree. The other driver and force him to go fast force him to trigger a review at least and uh you know maybe you can get him he or she next time around unless it's the same combo as you okay no all right fine neither one of you want to get it hit and i get that uh all right how do you cheat in a thousand foot race that's the honor code. Anyways, side note, totally unrelated. Good news for once. Capital City Motorsports Park has signed on as a new NHRA Division II member track. Uh, they're in Montgomery, Alabama. Capital City Motorsports Park is overseen by the owner, Ben Willis. Willis and his team coordinate racing and facility operations at the facility. All right, this was all on NHRARacer.com. Now, this is really cool. This track looks really nice, by the way. Um, and I'm assuming they're going to have a D2 race there uh, probably starting next year. But they're also gearing up for their 2021 schedule. They're going to include a free entry 10K event in August. And the Mike Smith Memorial Race, as well as the Junior Dragster Halloween Spectacular in October. So that sounds really cool. Free entry to a 10K event? I mean, pff, who wouldn't? Uh, all right, and a couple more things. That's it for like the racing stuff. Um, t-shirts. We got t-shirts. People started making purchases. Just send us a uh, message, classracingtoday at gmail.com. Send us something on Facebook. Um, t-shirts. At the track, t-shirts are $25 uh, right now since we're shipping them. The first t-shirt is 30 bucks. It comes with a sticker. Any additional t-shirts are 25 Okay, so the first shirt... Is 30 comes with a sticker free shipping and additional shirts are 25 bucks 
If you catch us at the track and we got a box of shirts there, $25 a piece for a t-shirt, thank you very much. It helps fund this podcast, helps support the podcast, helps pay for all that new equipment that we just got to make the podcast even better. Uh, Last but not least, I'll be in Atlanta for the national event in a couple weeks, so hope to see anybody there. Um, I will have a couple stickers with me. I won't have any shirts. Brian has the shirts in North Dakota, so if you need a shirt, it needs to be shipped to you from him. Okay, I only have a small and a medium, and that's probably not going to fit anybody but me. Uh, if anybody wants to hook me up with a, uh, if anybody wants to hook me up with a car to drive in Atlanta, that'd be phenomenal, stock or super stock. Um, but if anybody wants to hook me up with a uh, crew pass while I'm there, I'd appreciate that, and I will uh, send you the money for that too. If anybody can get me on their on their crew, so I can get uh, starting line access, restricted area. All right, that is it for... This guy is a generous guy, and he makes very good coffee. He he uh, is supporting Drag Racing Edge magazine and supporting our podcast in addition to supporting uh, race cars out there too. So, And you know what? The coffee is very good, and I'm not even just saying that because I was drinking the coffee liked it then i reached out to this gentleman and he was kind enough to help us out so i'm telling you you can't go wrong coffeebyartisan.com and uh we really appreciate their help uh all right guys that is it for me uh stay tuned for more interviews i'll be uploading them every day uh trying to do one or two a day as time permits uh class racing today on facebook class racing today on youtube Class Racing Today on Instagram. And t-shirts, like I said. All right? T-shirts, just send us a message. Class Racing Today at Gmail. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Have a good night. Take care. See you next week. Good luck to everybody running the Vegas 4 wide. That starts tomorrow. We'll be covering that uh, next week. Hopefully all of our new equipment is up and running by then. Have a good night.